Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial from ADSR and SoundTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel and you want to do that, you can at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. That was a quick demo of the airy pluck sound we'll be making today in Silent. And it could be used for a lot of different genres, but most uh, probably you'd use it you'd use it in EDM, progressive house, things like that. So I have a new instance of Silent pulled up. And we're going to jump right into it. So first thing I did was I turned the polyphony up to 16 uh, just because I was playing chord sounds. And in oscillator A1, and just as a side note, we are going to be using part A and part B for the sound, but part B is just going to be our noise generator. So going back to part A, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the H-pulse waveform. So it'll sound like such. And I'm going to turn the voices up to 8 and keep retrig on. And I'm going to give it a little bit of phase, so I'm going to turn this up to about 41.14 degrees, or around there, should do. Alright, I'm going to turn down this master volume real quick so it's not as loud and silent. Okay, and for the detune, you're going to keep that where it is at 0 and the stereo at 10. And you're going to keep this amp, amp envelope where it is at as well. And then in the, os the second oscillator for uh, part A, I'm going to keep it on this this uh, sine wave form. It kind of mellows out the sound a little bit and evens it out. So if I turn down the volume for the for the H pulse, that's just the volume for the sine. And I'm going to keep the phase and the detune and the stereo where they are at. But blending those two together. <laughs> kind of helps even out the sound a little bit. So moving on to part B, I'm just going to use oscillator B1 and I'm going to select this noise and I'm going to give it eight voices. Um, doesn't really matter. It just doesn't have a huge effect on the sound if you give it one voice to eight with noise. And I'm going to select retrig and on the volume, I'm just going to turn down the volume a little bit for this because um, this is kind of how I'm going to blend it instead of using mix A and mix B. <laughs> I'm going to boost the phase as well. All right, and so we don't have to touch the uh, sustain or the amp or the uh, the amp envelope for uh, part B, but I will go to back to part A and let's dial in the filter settings. And I will do part A's filter, and then I'll go back to part B. So in part A, you're going to have your input select on A because we just want it affecting this uh, the H pulse waveform and this sine waveform. And I'm going to select low pass filter, and in the for the cutoff, I'm going to actually leave it right in the middle where it's at, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of drive just to warm things up. I'm going to boost the drive to 0.71 or just around under 1. Alright, and now I'm going to go back to part B. And in part B, I'm going to select the the bandpass filter type. And the reason, so I noticed that if like, let me solo the sound, the part B sound. So if, if it's on low pass for the, for the noise, it kind of sounds like white noise to my ear. And if I turn on high pass, it's like a bright noise. Band pass is kind of let kind of is in the middle for the noise at certain settings, which I like. So it's not like super uh, it doesn't have as much of the spectrum as white noise, and it's not as high high. And it doesn't have as much high harmonic content as the uh, bright noise with the high pass kind of does. So what I'll do is I'll switch this to 12 dB to kind of warm up the sound. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of drive. I'm going to push the drive to 3.05. And then the cutoff I'm going to actually turn down to about 38, 39 hertz. All right, and if I bring back in the actual sound. Okay, so going back to part A, uh, we're going to go to this master filter control section, and I'm going to turn the cutoff down to 22.96. And after I play this, you're, you're going to be thinking that I killed a bulk of the sound. Which is true, but my thinking is with silent, um, almost, almost on every sound I'll end up making or even tweaking in silent, I'll end up using this modulation envelope. Unless I'm going for like a really simple saw or sound or sine wave or something like a fundamental type sound, but w what you can do with this as in instead of just turning up this filter control, you 
instead of just turning it up or down with this modulation envelope, I can control it. I can control actually both part A and part B uh, equally using one of these uh, destinations like cutoff A and B, but I can control it with the attack, the decay, the stain, the release. So I have much more control over the over. Um, oh, I have more control over the actual cutoff and what's going on with it as opposed to just more or less of the cutoff frequency. So that's why I usually tend to turn down the cutoff in the filter control because I'll bring it back up using the modulation envelopes. So is that that being said, I'm going to turn this little rotary knob up to 5.62. This affects how much is being applied to your your ADSR. All right, and then for the decay, I'm going to boost that to 3.22, and this will actually be this is actually how you'll hear the effect of the sound. Uh, unless you mess with this ADSR, it won't really do anything. So I'm going to push that to 3.22 or around there. Now I'm going to play it. All right, and then I'm going to give it a little bit more sustain. So I'm going to push this up to 1.26. And then I'm also going to add just a hair more release. So by default, it's at zero. So I'm going to push this up to about 0.80 or just under one. All right, and then I'm going to use this pitch trick. Uh, and if you're a massive user, you can liken this to using a kind of a really sharp envelope that's modulating the pitch of an oscillator. So in Silent, you can do this by applying the pitch AB to one of your modulation envelopes cranking the little rotary knob up to 10 and then just adding a hair like a pinch of of decay so I'm gonna go up to 0.40 for this sound and it adds that snappy attack to the beginning of the sound which is awesome so now I'm gonna go to the LFO and I'm gonna select phase A and B because I'm gonna I'm trying to make like a pseudo vibrato effect so if you select phase A and B it's not too no it's not as noticeable as selecting like the volume or the cutoff or something like that. And then I'm going to select a pretty musical rate for EDM. I'm going to select 1 over 16, so a 16th note. And for the gain, I'm going to push that gain up to about 6.24. Or 6.29, I guess, will work. And for the actual, this little rotary knob, there won't be any effect until I start adding. So I'm going to push it up to just 0.38. So it adds some really subtle movement, which kind of helps the sound come to life a little bit. So now with the mod wheel, I can uh, set up a destination, which I'll just do right now. I'll select mod wheel in this source. And then you could actually select um, phase A and B if you'd like, or LFO gain. Let's do that. So then... So then with the mod wheel, you can actually hear more... Um, of that LFO vibrato, and then I'll e I can even bring in cutoff A and B. So it's really, these uh, sources are pretty cool because you can actually set up some cool parameters that make the sounds and sounds very playable. So I can have the cutoff turned down, or I can crank it up. I was just controlling that with my mod wheel on my MIDI keyboard that's right near me. So now the only thing we have to do really is turn on and activate some effects. So I am going to select the EQ, and I'm just going to use this to boost some uh, some frequencies that I want. I'm going to turn this treble frequency down. I'm going to turn it down to about six, just about 700 hertz should do. And then I'm going to actually turn the treble. I'm going to turn that down a little bit, and then I'm just going to boost this bass frequency. All right, so now let's go on to the delay because right now it's kind of crazy and too much. So for the delay left, I am going to select a uh, 1 over 8 time ratio. And for the delay right, I'm going to select the I'm going to select a quarter. And then I'm going to select around 22 or 23 hertz for this low cut. Or 22.29 will work. And I'm going to 
roll off a little bit of the high end as well. And then I'm going to introduce this smear knob, which is really cool. It helps smear the, the uh, it helps kind of tame the bounciness of the delay. So I'm going to do that just about 2 or 2.2 .2 around there should work. And then for the feedback, I'm going to keep that in the middle. The width, I'm going to turn down just a little. I'm going to turn the dry wet. And I'm going to keep ping pong on. This ping pong will have it bounce back and forth between each speaker or headphone or whatever you have to be listening on in stereo. So I'm going to go to the reverb finally, which will help round out the sound. And for the size, I'm actually just going to keep it around where it was at. So by default, it's about 7.50. I'm just going to dial it back to about 6.5. And, and the width, I'm going to keep all the way up. I'm going to turn this pre-delay down because it's a pluck. I don't want a lot of pre-delay on it. And then you can just boost the dry wet to your taste. I'm going to turn it up a little. And that is the sound, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't checked out SilentTutorials.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things silent. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.